I'm about to start a new topic, um, topic of entropy and its uses in combinatorics. Uh, and that's going to occupy us for a little while. Um, so it's not, yeah, it's a little bit of a contrast between uh, with, with, with what we've done so far, because I'm going to be developing some theory and using that theory to some extent. Um, the word entropy has lots and lots of uses in mathematics. They're all sort of interconnected, um, ranging from entropy and statistical physics as a measure of disorder and entropy and information theory, which is more like what we're talking about. And then there are other notions like metric entropy, which I shan't be talking about here. Um, but it's this information theoretic notion of entropy, which is um, particularly useful in combinatorics. And um, there are various ways of introducing it. One of which is just to write down a formula and that I want to resist because I think if you do that, um, it makes it seem a rather mysterious concept. Uh, but there's an alternative approach, which is to introduce it axiomatically. And um, that I think makes it quite a lot clearer um, why it does what it does. Um, so let me, the main thing just, just to start with is to say, um, So I'm not going to tell you what entropy is straight away, but uh, let X be a discrete random variable. Um, I don't think I yet care where it takes its values, but no, later on I will. Um, so it's entropy, which I won't underline because this isn't a definition, it's entropy hx is a non-negative real number um, actually it can be infinite um, and uh, I'm just going to sort of just have it. It's good to have some kind of idea in one's head of roughly what entropy means. But uh, I've just replaced it by uh, replaced one mysterious word entropy by another information content. But maybe if I give you um, an example, which would be uh, this is in brackets, just to um, because again, it's not supposed to be, it's just a sort of thing to have in one's head. Uh, if X is uniformly distributed on naught one to N, then its entropy is N. Basically because you need N bits of information to specify X. But um, if X had some other distribution on naught one to the N, you would also need N bits of uh, N bits of um, information to, to, to determine what X is. But the point is that if X was sort of much more concentrated in certain values, then on average, if, you're, if you specify X, you're not specifying, um, well, on average, you can somehow specify it more efficiently. Uh, even if sometimes you specify it less efficiently, you can sort of chop up the distribution, not in the obvious way, coordinate by coordinate. Um, I'll make that a little bit clearer later on. That may again sound a slightly cryptic remark, but um, the main point I would like to stress here is that it satisfies the following axioms. Sometimes known as the Kinchin axioms, or sometimes uh, the Kinchin Shannon axioms. I'm not sure how standard either of those bits of uh, terminology are. But um, here we go. So the first one I want to mention is what I'll just call normalization. In fact, let's make that zero which is 
if x is uniformly distributed on naught one, then the entropy of x my pen doing weird things. The entropy of x is one. So the point is that the other axioms are going to specify what h is um, up to a multiplicative constant and this fixes what the constant is. So that's why I call it the normalization axiom. Um, the second one is, but I'll, I'll num number it number one because it's the first sort of proper one, so to speak. Um, If x takes values in A, y takes values in B, phi from A to B is a bijection and um, the probability that y equals phi a equals the probability that x equals a to all a and a. So in other words, x and y are basically equivalent random variables uh, that they determine um, probability distributions that are the same up to a bijection. Um, then the entropy of x equals the, the entropy of y. In other words, it really is just a, uh, the entropy is just a function of the probability distributions associated with x and y. Uh, there's something else called extensibility. And that's the following. So if x takes values in A, and y takes values in B, and A is a subset of B, and the probability that uh, y equals A equals the probability that x equals A, for all a and a. And notice that if that's the case, then y can't take values outside a. So basically we're just adding in some extra possible values that uh, y can take, um, but y never actually does take those values. So it's, uh, the distribution is basically the same. So then uh, the entropy of x is the same as the entropy of y. So just adding some values that are taken with probability zero doesn't count as anything interesting. Um, another rather basic property is um, hx depends continuously on uh, the probability distributions on the probabilities Uh, there's some question when if A is an infinite set, what we precisely we mean by continuous. I'm going to sidestep all that. Um, and because I'm only really going to be considering uh, finite sets. So let's just put for finite A and uh, maybe we can worry about what happens for infinite sets um, in some exercises or something like that. Uh, And um, 
Another one which is really quite important is the following. If x takes values in a finite set A, we want to maximize a x over all possible distributions that take values in A, then um, the distribution that does the job is the uniform distribution. That's the one that's uh, where you get most information, so to speak, from being told what x is. Now, all of those um, are, well, I think four is a little bit less uh, basic. So, I, I, north is just a normalization. One is just a kind of entropy as a sensible concept sort of axiom. Two is also one of those. Three is, again, um, saying that entropy is a sort of vaguely sensible concept. Maximization, well, you could imagine perhaps a world in which, uh, I mean, a sort of concept for which that was not true. Um, but uh, five is rather less obvious, but it's also one of the most useful concepts. Um, and I'm going to write it like this without telling you what it means, and then I'll tell you what it means. So, so write a formula. Okay, so let's look at this bit by bit. So h of x, y, <clears throat> just put a great big where, h of x, y is h of, it's just a, a slightly shorter way of writing h of the joint distribution of x and y. So, um, you know, if you've got two random variables, they may depend on each other in all sorts of funny ways. Um, but we can look at the ordered pair x comma y. That's got some sort of distribution. And as it's because it's got some sort of distribution, it's got an entropy. And we just denote it by x, uh, h square brackets, h y, uh, h square brackets, x y. Now what about this conditional entropy? That's what it's called. It's called the entropy of y conditioned on x. Um, it's the following. Uh, I haven't said this, but I'm going to assume that x takes values in A and y takes values in B. So it's the sum of all A and A of probability that x equals A times the probability, uh, so times the entropy of y given that x equals a. Now, if you're coming across this for the first time, this may be a slightly scary thing to write down because I've defined the conditional entropy in terms of the entropy. And so it looks as though maybe, and uh, even in terms of something that looks as though it's a conditional entropy already. So it looks almost as though this is a circular definition. So let me try to persuade you if it's not. So I need to tell you what this thing here means. Once we've got what this means, then it's, then it's straightforward. Well, um, if I fix the value of x, then y is going to have some sort of distribution. Um, that's the distribution. That's what I mean by the distribution of y given that x equals a. Since it's some kind of distribution, it's a random variable, that's just what... Um, y is, it's how y is distributed if you know that x takes the value a. And so it's got an entropy. And so that's what that is. And um, so uh, we then work out, so the, the conditional entropy of y given x is the expected value of the conditional entropy of y given that x equals a. In other words, you sum over the probability that x equals a times the conditional entropy of y given that x equals a. And uh, so that's what that is. Right. 
Um, so what we can think of, the, the way to think of this intuitively is um, h of y given x is um, the extra information that you get by being told what y is if you already know what x is on average. Okay, um, so let's make a couple of simple observations. So um, let's just see, I, I said it earlier on as a kind of way of thing to have in your head, that if you've got a uniform distribution on naught one to the n, then h of that uh, random variable is n. Perhaps we can just see how that follows from the axioms. But uh, I'll start with um, a simple lemma, which is, uh, if x and y are independent, then um, h of y given x equals h of y. Uh, I'm not sure I need to say very much here because if we just look at this formula, what is h of y given that x equals a? Well, if you know that x equals a, that has no effect on the probability that y equals b. That's the definition of, um, or in fact, it has no, 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 inf no influence at all. I, I better write something actually. Um, So the distribution of y given that uh, x equals a is the same as the distribution of y now if you want to be really strict about it the distribution of y given that x equals a uh, perhaps should be regarded as um, a probability distribution on um, A cross B or something like that, where B is a set where Y takes its values. Um, whereas Y is, takes values in B. But this is a case where we just kind of quietly apply the invariance axiom. So there's a bijection between um, singleton A cross B and B, and the probabilities are preserved when you apply that um, bijection. So I'm strictly speaking, uh, if you do it in a certain way, um, applying the invariance axiom here. Uh, so therefore, H of Y uh, given that X equals A equals H of Y all a and then adding up we get the result we want um, but uh, the uniform distribution on naught one to the n um, is the uh, joint distribution of, of just a joint distribution x1 up to xn where the xi's are iid variables which are uniformly distributed on naught one uh, so well by a trivial induction argument but um, so h well let's say but h x1 xn equals h x1 xn minus 1 plus h xn. 
because xn is independent of x1 up to xn minus 1. So that's by lemma 1. Uh, and then we're done by induction. And the normalization axiom. So the fact that h, h of x1 is 1 comes in there as well. And indeed, the uh, entropy of all of the xi's are 1. And more generally, of course, uh, oh, sorry, I've just something I didn't quite say. But I meant to say, so a corollary of lemma one. Um, so here I was using um, the fact that H of XY equals, I was using the um, added, uh, the last axiom is equal to H of x plus h of y given x and if y if if they're independent then that equals h of x plus h of y so the statement that the conditional entropy is the same as just um the entropy of y Trans is, is, is exactly equivalent to saying that uh, h of x y equals h of x plus h of y. Um, I'll finish this um, video with one more very simple fact, which is called the chain rule. And it's just a generalization of the uh, axiom here, which I forgot to give a name, but this axiom is sometimes called additivity. So put that in. So the chain rule is just a generalization of the additivity axiom and it says the following. Uh, H of x1 up to xn equals H of x1 plus H of a lot of these things uh, are very reminiscent of, um, for example, statements about conditional probability, but uh, they're not quite the same. Plus H of Xn given X1 up to Xn minus 1. And why is that? Um, it's because it's again by induction, and it's almost immediate. So uh, we get that h x one up to x n equals h x one. This is applying the additivity rule uh, n minus one plus h of xn given x1 up to xn minus 1. So that's given us the last term here and then this by induction is the rest. So done by induction. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to, I think I'm in this um, section of the course on entropy, I'm going to try to do things in quite small bite-sized chunks. So I've given you some rather simple facts directly from the definition. In the next video I'll do some slightly less simple facts and um, then we'll have a rather short application to a combinatorial problem and then later on we will have some longer ones.